I'm not going to be before you long, but just really want to just encourage you through just some things I have on my heart as it relates to this new series that we're moving in on today entitled The Summer of Hope. You know, every month um, at the end of this, for this particular time of the season in the month of June and July, we focus an entire month on a summer of hope, which can be a range of various types of messages from various types of or various speakers. And today, I want to just start us off by talking about how to win without wounding others. How you can win without wounding others. In this era of self-care, which I believe is important, and let's be clear, self-care is nothing new. Self-care has been around for centuries, but we live in an era, a day where our modern generation knows how to take something and, 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 and just act like they brought it, act like they made it up. But people have been taking care of themselves for centuries, for years now, and we have coined over the past two years in the midst of COVID, we have amplified this idea, this concept of self-care that if you really go back in history, in our country, back in the 1960s, it really was a word that was used in the black power movement when it came to uh, particularly females, but also black men and women that were in prison, and their theme was making sure that they would take care of themselves in the midst of all the oppressive things that was going on um, with them as they was fighting for freedom. And so they assured that they took care of themselves. But today we have taken this idea, this concept, self-care, which we should, to mean that we're going to take care of our Selves. And again, we need to take care of ourselves emotionally, physically, and spiritually. We should be taking care of ourselves. Matter of fact, I, uh, what is self-care if you ask the question? It is any deliberate activity aimed at cultivating emotional, somebody say emotional, say mental, and say physical. It is any deliberate activity aimed at cultivating emotional, mental, and physical health. And this can include, watch this here, prioritizing rest, setting healthy boundaries, pursuing passions, and watch this here, seeing a therapist. All, All that can encompass making sure that you are taking care of yourself. Now, I want to talk about self-care for a moment versus selfishness because this is a lot of things I'm seeing going on now. Again, we have the tendency as human beings, we we could take a good thing and turn it into something bad. It's almost like Christmas. It was a good time of the year that we celebrate giving gifts, but for many people, it is a very stressful time of the year because you're shopping or trying to shop and buy everybody at the same time a gift which I think is the craziest thing ever when technically everybody got their own birthday. That's Jesus' birthday. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Buy everybody a gift on their own birthday. Spread it out throughout the year so you're not spending one whole season trying to buy 50, 60 people of gift. Now you bought all the gifts. Christmas is over, and now you're in credit card debt. Talking about needing some self-care. Come on, somebody, to get that debt paid off. And so we are even in an era now where self-care Capitalism is capitalizing off of the need of self-care. And so because everybody is going, spending money, getting their nails done, is self-care. I'm going to get my hair done, self-care. I'm going to take a vacation, self-care. We do all the, I'm cutting the people off all in the name of watches here, self-care. I got to protect my energy, self-care. We're saying all of these things in the right context is good, but when we watch some of the stuff that we're doing, it's not taking care of ourselves. It's really hurting ourselves. We're putting ourselves in more debt. We're putting ourselves in more stress. We're putting ourselves in more frustration. So let's make sure that we have a a healthy understanding of what self-care is. Here's a thought. Self-care is about replenishing your resources without depleting someone else's. Let's say it again. Self-care, I'll get some scriptures here shortly. Self-care is about replenishing yourself without without depleting someone else's. My self-care, watch this here, my self-care is important because it empowers me to better serve others. See, see, the, the self-care and selfishness we got to be very careful with because we need to take care of ourselves so that we can better serve other people. It, it, it's, the, it's the reason why we need to take care of ourselves. Man, what? We need to take care of our bodies so that we can be around long, not just for ourselves, but for the people that we love. True self-care is really about other people. 
It's about me taking care of me so that I can better do what I'm called to do in the earth. You know, what the saying says, you cannot pour from an empty cup. You cannot pour from it. And so, therefore, I'm pouring for a reason. I'm pouring to be a blessing. I'm pouring to be an answer into somebody's life. And so, therefore, I need to take care of myself. So, watch this here. Self-care is not about me first. It's about me, too. I'm going to say it again. Real self-care is not about me first. It's about me, too. Because how many of you know there are some times in life you're not going to be first? And, and that's a mama with a newborn baby. I, I, it, it's not going to be me first for a minute. It's going to be baby first. Come on, mothers who had that baby, and you like, I want to go to bed tonight at 9 o'clock. You better stay asleep until 9 in the morning. And that baby going to show you one hour later who's the boss. I'll be up in an hour. <laughs> right? It, 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 it's not me first. It's me too. And so getting a healthy understanding of what really self-care is all about, particularly for us as Christians, us as believers, because we live in a backwards kingdom. See, in the world, it teaches us if somebody gets you, you get them back. The, uh, but in the kingdom or, 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 or in the world, the way up, you got to sleep your way to the top, lie your way to the top, steal your way to the top. But we live in a backwards kingdom that says if your enemy is hungry, Feed them. If my enemy is hungry, I'm going to laugh at them and say, good for you, is what many people would say, right? Because we don't want to naturally feed our enemies. But we're in a backwards kingdom where even when it comes to this self-care thing, he talks about putting others first. The kingdom of God is all about putting others first. Jesus Christ put others first. First, it's the reason why he died on the cross, because he had you and I in his mind. He sacrificed his life for you. And so this is the type of place, if you really want to get real peace, real shalom, I'm not going to teach this in this series here, but I'm going to talk about the Sabbath, how we need to restore the Sabbath back to our personal life, because that's going to give you a real self-care package. Do you know the reason why God gave the children of Israel the Sabbath? He gave them that Sabbath because for 400 years they were in bondage to Pharaoh. So when they came out of bondage, one of the first gifts he gave them was the Sabbath, a day of rest. Because they was working from sunup to sundown every single day. They did not have a day off. So the Sabbath really was a gift from God. And we have to remember as believers that if God made that a gift for them, it may not be a specific day but a Sabbath rest is important to our lives. You know, the Jewish people, amen. Thank you for that one clap. God bless you too. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, the Jewish people even today on Fridays, I think it is, at a certain hour, they don't do any work. They literally, they don't do any hard labor. They don't do any work. They even walk wherever they go. And they take the time, watch this here, to see the real green in the trees. Have you ever really stopped lately to see the real colors of the sky? Have you really stopped long enough to see how green the flower really is? We see it, but we don't pause long enough to see, it, to see the real beauty in the thing. Why? Because we're so busy. We so are in the haze. We don't take it slow to see the beauty of life. And this is one of the reasons why time is flying by for some of us, because we're so busy, and it's like, man, time is flying by. But I've learned that if we pause long enough to sit on the couch for two or three hours and don't do nothing. I did it yesterday. I didn't do nothing. And time went by so slow. The reason why time goes by so fast for us because we have created a culture and a world where we always got to be busy doing something. I'm looking at something now uh, um, as it relates to when it comes to self-care. Sometimes our hobby, it's a hobby we got that's supposed to be a part of our self-care, but we turn it into a business. Some of you have turned what was supposed to be a hobby for you into a, we try to monetize every single thing and the thing that was supposed to be a hobby to give you rest and blessing and enjoyment, you're now frustrated because you turned a hobby. Everything is not supposed to be monetized in your life. It is supposed to be a way to find some refreshing. Now, I'm not saying that, that there's those people who got a calling and a gift to do with that thing, but it's too many. Everybody now has to have a business Facebook page. 
Everybody does not need a business Facebook page. It's like a style now. It's the thing that we do right now because culture and society say you got to sell something to be great. Everybody got to get new pictures taken to get a profile picture to look like they got a new business. <laughs> that is tiresome. That's going to wear you out. Self-care is about replenishing your resources without depleting someone else's. Immediately when we think about resources, our mind thinks about maybe, maybe uh, money or, or, or physical stuff. But self-care is about replenishing your resources, oftentimes your, your energy, your availability, your peace, your joy, uh, without depleting someone else's peace and joy. So we're in this hour now where pop culture is just teaching people to, for your self-care, cut people off with no ex explanation. Girl, just cut them off and don't even explain. That's demonic. That, that, that's a, now, energy you need to cut off with no explanation is, is, is people that shouldn't be in your life anyway. Like you say, I'm going to cut that boyfriend off. Okay, don't explain. I mean, I'm saying particularly if you got a wife or a husband. Now, that you cool. Cut off no explanation. I ain't got to explain nothing to you. But you can't say I'm cutting my mama off with no explanation. I'm cutting my best friend off with no explanation. Somebody you've been hanging out for weeks and for months and years, and you just go missing in action all in the name of self-care. That's not healthy. That's not God. That's, what does someone do that to you? You'll be going, like, I can't believe, ooh, 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 hey, I can't take that negative energy. Uh -uh, you, no. But you'll do it to someone else. No, we, 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 if you need to cut somebody off, tell them, hey, I need some time to myself. I won't be available for, particularly for people you love. Amen. Okay, okay. Amen. Some of you are drowning. I'm going to scripture here real soon. Um, some of you are drowning, but you don't need to be rescued. You need to learn how to swim. You don't need to be rescued. Some of you are drowning in stuff that you need to learn how to swim in. And so I'm going to teach you over today and next week how all of this is going to come together in this summer of hope because some of us get on islands by ourselves. We get on Gilligan's, Gilligan's Island and we get stuck over there by ourselves. I don't know about you, but have you ever went on a vacation and didn't want to go home? I mean, and if you haven't been somewhere yet that make you don't want to go home, you ain't been on a real vacation. Uh, see me after service saying, let me give you some referrals because there has been some places I have been with like, I do not want to go home. Man, I do not want to leave here. Have you ever been there before? I mean, even contemplating, man, if I didn't have nobody at home to go to, I'll stay here. <laughs> Are you with me? But you don't stay there because you know you have to return. You, you only go, you only retreat to a vacation for a season to be able to go replenish yourself and enjoy just to go back to work and do it all over again. And you tell that vacation, I'll see you in three months. I'll see you in, but we're not, we're not called to stay on the island. We're not called to stay. And this is what many people are doing now. They are becoming addicted to this thing that we call self-care. They're isolating themselves from everybody. They're calling in at work, not going in. Then you get broke, and then you want to pray to God, I need some money. Because you're taking care of your, you find a way to justify, and then we don't call in to give them warning, I'm not coming. Self-care. That's, that, that, that's not healthy. Okay, Corey, give them scripture, because they're thinking, you're just talking stuff, and ain't no scripture up in nothing you're saying today. Okay. Now, let me give you three signs that we may be overstaying our welcome in the tropics of self-care. We are scared to let other people onto our island. I've had countless, I can't even, at least both hands, of inboxes and messages from people dealing with people who cut them off and how it has impacted their life and how it has made them bitter, how it has made them question what did they do wrong. Because someone they love would not answer the phone. 
because they cut that person off with no explanation. They said there was no negativity going on. They were fine, but just out of nowhere, they will not return a call. We're scared to let people onto our island. Oftentimes, people are scared to let people onto the island because when they went on vacation, it was so great. I don't want anybody to mess my vibe up. Now I'm back. I'm keeping my peace. I like what I feel right now, and I don't want nobody to disturb. When you go back to work on Monday, somebody going to, going to disturb that peace. Somebody going to disturb it. At 4 o'clock when the kids show home from work, you, you've been home all day relaxing and enjoying your little me time. The kids will be busting up in that door at 3 o'clock, and they don't care how peaceful it was. Mama, I want something to eat. There goes your peace. Get the cooking, Mama. You can't go in the room and say, well, I'm not taking care of the kids in the name of self-care. I'm not feeding my husband today in the name of self-care. Now, if you do, there's a right and wrong way to do that. Hey, you know what? I, don't, I, I am stressed out from cooking for the past three months. I'm going to have meals ordered for the next. See, because again, self-care is about replenishing your resources without depleting someone else's. So husband or wife, you can't say I'm taking care of myself, but you over... Look the needs of your spouse. Even if you change the routine, what are you going to replace it with? Well, he he going to cook for himself. This I ain't cooking for nobody. Okay. <laughs> What's the backup plan? DoorDash. DoorDash works, but make sure it's a part of the plan. Cool. <laughs> but that, but that's fine. Just feed me. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And let me know you feed me. <laughs> so I'm fine with DoorDash. We're scared to let other people onto the island because we don't want to mess up the sereneness of what we've undeveloped. Let no one, 1 Corinthians 10, 24 says, let no one seek his own good. Ooh, this is backwards kingdom thinking here. Let no one seek his own good but the good of his neighbor. I don't see no self-care in that. Come on. It says, let no one seek his own good but the good of his neighbor. Neighbor, how, how do you reconcile that in a self-care world? Again, it's not about me first, it's about me too. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friend. Self-care. How do you reconcile that in a, per, in a self-care world? And again, I believe so is because I take care of myself so that I'm empowered to take care of others. Are you with me? A better me means a better you. And you know how they used to say, which I hate, you know, you used to say, when mama's not happy, or if mama's happy, everybody, I don't just, that's crazy to me. So you want a happy wife but a miserable husband. I saw some of y'all ladies roll your eyes at me like, I used to love my pastor before he made that statement just then. But we pick up some of these cliches from the world, and they sound good, but a happy wife, happy life. So you mean to tell me then, if, it's flipped, if she's not happy, the, the world's going to be, our house going to be jacked up because she ain't happy? It's nothing worse than a man that's not happy. And when a man not happy, he don't show it the way you show it, ladies. It come out a whole different way. It should be a happy husband, happy wife, happy house. It should be if ain't nobody, if ain't no, if ain't nobody happy, no, if everybody happy, ain't nobody happy. Come on, it, 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 this is kingdom thinking forces us to think different than the world. It, it, it forces us to think because your goal, see, if the goal is to please her. If my goal is to please her and her goal is to please me, we always should be filled. But self-care says he just needs to take care of my needs and nothing else matters. As long as he takes care of me, then he'll be okay. But what if that's go both ways? You got two people taking care of each other, almost like you're out doing taking care of each other. Philippians 2.3 says, do nothing from selfish ambition 
or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than... It, it, this is it's easy for me. I'm, I'm just going to say that. Because when you live out these principles, you see the benefit of them. You see the fruit of putting others first. It, it, it's, 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 it, it's, I believe God is for self-care. There's many scriptures about taking care of your mind and guarding your heart. For out of it flows the issues of be careful what you let in. Be, be careful who you talk to. Self-care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, uh, he It's many scriptures on how we take care of ourselves. There's a recipe for our our self-care plan right in the Word of God, if we take advantage of it. But capitalism, like the hijack, a real thing, and say, man, whoo, that's a real self-care need. Let me see now how I can use it, push it in their face, and capitalize off of it. And so, therefore, now we constantly get now hair done and nails done. And ladies, please get your hair done. Particularly my wife, thank you, sister, friend. Keep looking good. Don't stop doing none of that. But not at the expense of going in debt. You know what? I'm, I'm, it's Friday. I'm, taking, I'm going shopping today, and I'm just going to get me a new car in, in, in the name of self-care. Didn't consider the fact you're trying to buy a house six months from now. We do stuff like this all, all in the name of self I just want to be happy, 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 and I'll pay the price later. And you will. You will pay the price later. Here's another point. We think we'll find everything we need on the island if we stay there. Romans 8, 32 says, He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? He gave it all away. If, if he did that much for us, how much more graciously will he give us all things? We are so busy trying to save our lives that we're losing it. See, when you learn how to give your life away, you'll find your life. This is backwards kingdom thinking. This is the mind of Christ. When he showed up, he didn't try to save his life. He gave it away and ended up giving, getting more life. He's in, he's in all of us believers right now because he was willing to give his life. Except the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it falls into the ground and dies, it brings forth a greater harvest. Some of you are the seed, but you refuse to die. And because you refuse to die, you will never see the harvest. You're going to stay in seed form Because it's all about me, 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 me. And you don't see the potential in the death. You don't see the potential in the dying. Dying to self, dying to me, myself, and I, so that you can experience all that God has for you. We don't don't want to leave our island. Jesus took time to care for himself. He withdrew from the crowds in John 10, 40. He spent time alone with the Father in Luke 5, 15. He enjoyed meals in John 12. He took naps in Mark chapter 4. He didn't stay there, though. He rested. He ate. He took naps. He ministered to people. Then he withdrew himself, but he did not stay there. He took care of himself, but he made sure he did what he was purposed to do, assigned to do in the earth. He took care of himself in the process before we even coined the word self-care. Some of you, all you need is a good nap, a good sleep. Some of you need to just go home and go to bed. You crank it because you just need to go to sleep. Some of you, all you do is sleep. (laughs) Some some of you, all you do is sleep. And that is a telltale sign that something may be wrong. All this is necessary. Jesus took time to care for himself. He returned to the needy masses. He continued his ministry, used God's words for nourishment, and he awoke from his nap just in time to calm the stormy seas. See, taking care of yourself is important for you to calm the seas in your life. 
for you to work miracles. You cannot work miracles. You cannot fulfill your calling and your purposes without rest. Jesus rested so well and said, okay, what's next? Think about that. We rest so that we can go do something. That's the reason why people who, who, who um, always, just always sleeping, they're like, you ain't do nothing yet to sleep, to qualify to rest. We call that lazy people. Like you haven't done nothing yet. What? You, you don't qualify to go take a nap. You haven't, you haven't done nothing yet. We rest from our labor. We rest because we have labored. And after we labor, it makes sense to go rest. Self-care. Just in time to calm the stormy seas. Scripture says in John 10, 40, then Jesus went back across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptizing in the early days, and there he stayed. He didn't stay there for, for a couple hours. He stayed there by himself for a few days. Self-care. He'd taken care of himself, but he qualified to take, do that because he just did something. You ever saw lazy people? Okay, well, God bless y'all. I've seen them, and they, they're, they're not fun to be around because you're doing all the work, and that is when you cut off negative energy. That's when you hold people accountable. That's when you say enough is enough. I mean, have you ever been, been at a job, you all three been hired for the same thing, but you're doing all the work? Or, or if that's not the case, but if, you are, if all three of you were hired for a job, you're doing all the work, I promise you at some point you're going to say something. Am I right about it? We all getting paid the same check for the same amount of hours, but I'm doing all the work. I'm calling the boss in on somebody. Because either I'm getting a raise or you're going to carry your weight. So that, that's when you begin to cut things off. That's when you begin to have those necessary conversations about things that is taken away from your energy unnecessarily. Because if you're doing the work of three people while three people are there and getting paid the same, then that's when you cut off negative energy. That's when you make adjustments. That's when you make changes. Let me give you three things that I've done for today. <laughs> How do, if you're on, if that island of self-care is the place for rebuilding and refreshing to prepare us to set off for new territory or, 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 or the mainland, if you would, how do I make sure that I use this trip wisely? So we go on vacation for a reason, right, to be refreshed. You leave all work home, no computers, come on, somebody. We went to New York last month. I think I took my computer, but I didn't use it. I only used it just in case I had to go find, find something, a trip stuff, trip, trip-related stuff, but not work-related. How do I make sure I use the tools I learned in self-care season appropriate now that it's, when it's time to get work? Number one, get rid of the excess baggage. Look what it says here in Acts 20 35. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You got to let some stuff go. Give some stuff away. If that's not your experience, when, you, when we give and serve, it's time to ask yourself why. why. Why are you not excited when you give? Why don't you find pleasure and joy when you serve? It's time to ask yourself, why do I serve and give grudgingly? Is there selfishness in there somewhere where you don't want to, you want to receive, but you don't want to give? You want to be served, but you don't want to serve. You want to be blessed, but you don't want to be a blessing. Talking about self-care versus selfishness. Look what it says here. It says here in Luke 23, when Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been waiting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answers. You ever heard a statement, say no to the good? I mean, say no to the good so you can say yes to the best. Sometimes you can't answer every question. It's appropriate. Sometimes you can't go everywhere. You can't be at every meeting every party because if you're if you're everywhere at the wrong things you can never be at the right things so if you're going to take care of yourself yes there needs to be a healthy understanding of and Herod was not there for a good reason let me make that clear 
Turner was not asking questions because he really wanted to be a part of this Jesus thing. And you have to be able to, to know what is there to help you and what is there to hurt you. Are we over committed? Are we giving for the wrong reasons? Do we need to take a break? I told them in our dream tomb room today, at least three Sundays over the next two months, I'm not going to be here. And I also told them, you won't tell me when you ain't going to be here. I ain't going to tell you which Sunday I ain't going to be here. If you just don't show up, so I ain't going to just show up. Don't, don't say when so I can make sure I stay home. Nope, I'm, 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 I'm not telling you. We got to know when to take a break. Even Jesus set boundaries. Here's another one. Get rid of the excess baggage. Find a fellow peddler, someone to go with, swim with, to, to get in the boat with. The Bible says in Proverbs 11, 14, where no counsel is, is the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Going through, need a counselor? Need some good advice? Don't make that decision by yourself. Get somebody else in the conversation with you. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Some things you can get the victory on if you let somebody in the conversation. But if you do it by yourself, the whole boat may go down. And sometimes the reason why I won't let nobody into the conversation because of fear of what they may say proud of what was done and how they may perceive you or perceive the situation. But that's nothing but pride. You need to invite somebody into the equation. Here's one more thing and we're done. Trust the compass. You ever used a compass before? It can be trusted. Even if you don't understand the compass. And sometimes it's hard to understand the ways of God. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. It's sometimes it's hard to understand it, but I've learned that when you can't under, when you can't trace them, still trust them. When you can't trace them, still trust them. When they don't make sense, still trust them. Job says, I went forward and he was not there. I looked to my side. I could not, I looked behind. I could not even proceed. He said, but when he has tried me, I will come forth as pure gold. But just like a trusted compass, God is unaltered by the changing winds. Are you being altered by the changing winds in your life? Are, are the winds tossing you to and fro? You need to put your trust in a trusted compass. I share with them on Wednesday night. I'm done here. The devil will lie to you. The world will pollute you. And your problems will confuse you. And I believe that that's where many people in our world, in our church, is at today. And if you're going to win, win without wounding others, you're going to have to know that there's a devil out there, there's an enemy out there, that he does not want you to be on an island of peace. He wants you to be on an island of frustration, on an island of debt, on the island of anger, on the island of frustration. But the devil will lie to you. John 8, 44 says, when the devil lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. In other words, whenever the devil opens his mouth, he's about to tell a lie. He cannot tell the truth even if he wants to tell the truth. Even when he spoke to Eve in the garden, the little truth that he tried to say, he couldn't even speak the truth straight. He began to add because he could not say the truth. Psalm 13, 2, how long must I wrestle with my thoughts and every day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Self-care, taking care of yourself emotionally and psychologically is important, particularly when you're wrestling with your thoughts. The devil will lie to you. The world will pollute you. Ephesians 4, 17 says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God. Listen, God has a better way for you to make sure that you're having peace in every, peace in the midst of any storm you may be going through. His ways are better than the world's ways. His messages, his methods and strategies are better than the world's methods and strategies. So if you're going through today, you need peace in your heart, peace in your mind. There's a word, there's a scripture in the word of God for anything you may be going through. 
there's a scripture, there's a strategy in the Word of God. And the world will pollute you. The world will pollute that. And your problems will confuse you. Look what Psalm 10, 1 says here. It's not going to be on the screen. It says, Why, O Lord, do you stand afar off? Why do you hide yourself in times of troubles? Anybody in trouble lately? He, he says, Why do you stand afar off? I need a few people. I'm, I'm done. Give me a few people real fast here. Give me about five or six people. He's, why, O oh Lord, do you stand afar off? Your problems will get between you and God. It'll get between you and God. He said, why do you stand afar off? Here is the psalmist. He's asking God, why do you stand afar off? And I'm God in this equation. Here. Matter of fact, Lord, if you would, but you be God in this equation. And he's asking God, why do you stand afar? Because at one point he was near. And matter of fact, he is still near. The issue is not that God has moved. What happens is, I face him. We put other things in between us and God. Our problems. The things we we put in front of him. It puts him further away. And then it doesn't just start with one thing, and then it starts with something else, and then we push him further back. And so God is no longer here. He's now here. And then the more, if we're not careful, we keep putting more things in between us and God, and it seems that God, where are you? The God that was once near you he is far away from you because you allowed the world to pollute you with all the pleasures. And here's the thing. Many of the things that stand in, the in between us and God is the blessing that he gave us. But now we, we, we honor the thing that he has created more than we do the creator himself. And God says, I don't care if it's your fiance, if it's your friends, I will have no other God before me. And if you ever want to experience my presence, you can never allow the stuff that I give you to get in between us. And he asked the question, why are you so far away from me? And you have to make that decision to allow all these other things, you stay there, to allow him to stay first. It doesn't mean you don't need this. It doesn't mean you don't love this. It does mean he's priority. He's first. He's going to assure, he's going to ensure that everything that does belong to me is taken care of. That, that, that if I'm called to marry her, watch this here, if I'm called to marry her, he's going to make sure that I have the wisdom and the guidance that I need to give her what she needs. But if I take her and put her before God, you mess up the whole equation. And you find yourself in a state of frustration and stress, anger and bitterness, and you need some self-care. Thank you. This, this is the wrong season. Thank you. This is the wrong season. I'm done. This is the wrong season for us not to prioritize prioritize God in our life. As the world is going crazy and going wild, I want to encourage you, Hope City, in this season of hope, this summer of hope, that no matter where you go, no matter where you travel, take God with you. Kiki, kiki. There's no vacation that great without God. I'm not saying you, you've got to go to a full, a full revival on vacation. But I am saying, take God with you wherever you may go in this summer of hope, and I promise you, he will be the difference maker. Let's give God a praise for his word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your word. Thanks for speaking to our hearts. Thanks for speaking to our minds.